Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm at my door, and I've got some cool things to show you. Today, I want to review the life history of the American newt, also known as the red spotted newt or the eastern newt. And I was lucky enough that I ran across all three stages of the eastern red spotted newt. I found the gilled larva, I found a red F stage, which is the middle stage, and I found the adult yellow bellied with a flattened tail that lives in ponds. So today, I want to put it all together and show you the whole life history of this unusual, unusual salamander that has three life stages unlike any other salamander that I know of. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. It's like top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. This is the larval stage of the red spotted newt. And I was lucky enough to find them in my pond. I was actually netting some tadpoles because I wanted to see if they had started to develop their front legs yet. And I just happened on this guy and I was so excited because I wanted to be able to put the whole story together. And in that same day, I found both the adults and the red F stage. These guys hatched from eggs. The eggs were deposited on aquatic vegetation underneath the water or little bits of detritus. And in a couple weeks, the eggs hatched. The eggs were laid in, in my pond in late March and early April. And these guys hatched from the eggs. They feed on water fleas and microscopic plankton, uh, zooplankton that's in the water, uh, larval insects that are in the water. They're pretty good swimmers. I'll pan back out here so you can you can see them move. Whoa, there he goes. And so they're, whoa. So pretty good at taking care of themselves. They'll live in the pond for the rest of the summer. They'll undergo a transformation where they'll lose these gills and then instead of being this camo color they will turn a bright orange. Their skin will become very non-porous and they'll move out and live on land. So these guys were hatched in the pond in early spring from eggs laid by the females. They lived in the pond all summer feeding on very, very small invertebrates because you can see that this guy's pretty small, not much longer than the width, maybe two widths of my finger. They will undergo a transformation, leave the pond and become the terrestrial F stage bug box just now so you can see a close-up you can see his gills and his eyes and his delicate legs and he primarily uses that tail for swimming right now I'll be returning this guy to the larger pan where there's lots of water and a lot of surface area and then I'm going to take him right back down to the pond and put him back in the pond again and there he is and you can see how he's completely adapted for life in the water with a broad flat tail and very significant gills. And so he, as he changes, he'll lose that tail and lose that camo color and become bright orange because that bright orange stage is very toxic. This is my temporary container for the F stage, which I happened to found walking across the forest floor. And it's not uncommon to find these walking across the forest floor with complete confidence because they have this bright orange color. To identify these guys, the key is these red spots that are circled in black on both sides of his back. And that gives it the name, the red spotted newt. It's commonly also called the eastern newt. These guys really stand out on the background. This is the most toxic of the life stages. And I did a video about the toxicity and about aposematic coloration. You should go check that out. So these guys, after they leave the pond from this larval stage that's gilled, they emerge on land having lost the gills and having lost that flatness to their tail. And uh, their skin is actually, I wet my hand a little bit to 
hold them, which is always good practice with newts. Their skin is very non-porous and almost dry. And they're just really endearing little guys to have around. Now this guy, well, it was down near my pond. So that's the, the F stage of the red spotted newt or the eastern newt. It's the most toxic stage and he'll live on land for up to three years, maybe four, maybe five. And the literature kind of varies on, on the period of time that they do this. He's left the water and this is his terrestrial stage. And he's very well adapted to that environment. This is his aquatic stage and you can see that his tail is flattened for swimming and he has a bright yellow spotted belly and the thing that stayed the same if you look closely at his side is that he still has the red spots with the black circle around them and that's the key feature to identify the eastern newt or the red spotted newt that's why we always stick with scientific names to make sure that we're all talking about the same organism these guys are big predators in ponds they'll eat all sorts of things any kind of aquatic invertebrates that they can catch and eat they they will they will take them on and they will live the rest of their life in this adult stage. Newts may live up to 10 or 12 years in a pond. You can see he, he, he came up to get a gulp of air. Every late winter, they will breed and males and females will get together. So that's the story of the Eastern Newt. I've got three or four videos where I talk about the story more in detail. So check out my newt videos. And I tell you, I was just excited to be able to find the red F stage and the larval newt stage all in the same day. And really cool to find all the three stages together at one time. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Kind of pulling it together on the life cycle of the red spotted newt. Now I want you to know that all right, as soon as this video is over, I'm taking those guys back to the pond where I found them. The larval newt with the gills and the adult. I found them both in my pond here in, well, my backyard. And the other guy, I'm putting them right back into a little wetland where I found them near the pond. So everybody's going back exactly where I found them. And that's really good practice. If you take an animal home or a reptile or amphibian or a frog, you know, to enjoy them and look at them and learn about them for a little bit. I'm not an advocate at all of keeping any of these organisms for a long period of time. You need to be sure they're protected and you should be sure they're out of direct sunlight and they got plenty of water and they'll be okay. But always, always, always return organisms back exactly where you find them. If you turn over rocks, put the rocks back where they were. If you turn over a log, put the log back where it was. I want you to enjoy nature, enjoy seeing it. The best place, of course, to see it is out there in nature. I take a little bit of poetic license here so that I can, you know, bring in animals in and teach you about them so you can learn. Remember, I don't want you to just watch my videos. I want you to go outside and see what you can find. I don't want you to take what I say for fact. I want you to look stuff up on the internet. I want you to fact check me. I want you to be an active learner and access learning. When you have the name of something and you have a scientific name, if you're watching me on this channel, you have access to the internet. And if you have access to the internet, you have an incredible amount of knowledge and photos and videos to access. And I want you to go and see them. So go outside, see what you can find, experience nature, learn new things, look stuff up. And lastly, if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button and do share my videos with people you think would be interested in them, could benefit from them and would enjoy them. And especially teachers and homeschoolers, I know that this is a good resource for them. And I'd love for them to maybe I can make their life a little bit easier by giving them a resource to use with their students and get their kids fired up about science. See you later.